Hi guys, Dr. Gillard. Today we're going to make up the lecture pre-midterm that I give uh, over radiology of the lower extremities, which the gross anatomy one finals or midterm is going to be over anyway. So it shouldn't be too terribly hard and it should reinforce your osteology. So I think it'll be a good lecture for you. So here we go. Okay, so what's this thing? That's right, this is the pelvis. This is the pelvis, sacrum in the middle here. Now that's for your spinal palp, not for this class, so I won't focus on that. But you can see the femurs are connecting into the, what's one of these bones called? Coxal bone. Two coxal bones make up a pelvis. Then we have some parts here. We have part number 11 here. This is the ala, the ala, which is on the front and the back side. So if that's marked, you'll call that ala of the ilium, or the ilial wing is another word. How about this one, number 10? That is the iliac crest. Okay. This is actually the pelvic inlet right here. See how this makes a kind of an inlet. This down here, although from this angle, this is a little bit uh, S to I angled uh, pelvic view. It's not perfectly straight A to P, but this would be the, what's this? Angle of the pubis here. And number five, you can see this thing. That's the, fe the head of the femur, femoral head. Number four, good, the neck of the femur, number one, greater trochanter of the femur. Where's the lesser trochanters? They're kind of right in this area here. Can't really see them very good in this, from this view. How about number two here? Obturator foramen. Now this is where it gets tricky. So this is the, what, number seven? Superior pubic ramus, number nine. Inferior pubic ramus, number eight. Ramus of the ischium, number six. The things you sit on. Ischial tuberosities, number three. Pubic symphysis or symphys pubis, number four, we already did that. The neck. And did we get them all? I think so. You can see something else here. Look at this right here where the little arrow is. I didn't mark it. Pubic tubercle is right there. And there's a few other things, but I think that's good enough. And there's... So you don't have to take too many notes on this PowerPoint. You have to take a few things, but... We've got to point this one out right here, this region right here. So that's the body of the ilium. I love the ilium we did. Okay. So this is just a close-up here. So again, this is the head of the femur, and that fits into number five. Number five goes all the way around here. Good, that's the acetabulum. And number four again, issue of tuberosity, number one, greater trochanter, neck is right here. What's that? There's the lesser trochanter. Okay, next. Labeled for you, I don't think we need to talk any more about that. Now what in the heck is this? So this is a CT scan. Remember now this this cuts in pieces and slices. So this is a coronal CT scan. Do you see anything strange here? Well, let's see. We are just looking at the femur. Uh, now this is a different type of an angle, but this is a normal femur here. Okay, there's trochanter right there. Okay, there's the cortex, this really white region here, which is very thick. 
Now let's look at the other side. What's going on here? Whoa. That's right. We have a fracture and displacement of the femoral neck on this side. So displaced fracture, not a good thing. Now what's this? And I th I'm throwing some of these in here because you're not going to see beautiful x-rays all the time. In fact, this is kind of what you're going to see. Uh, I mean, if you want wanted to become a DACBR, you're going to see some x-rays that aren't so great or some radiographs. I shouldn't call it x-ray, right? X-rays, the, the rays that come out of the x-ray machine. This is a radiograph. So this is an A to P. Here's the femoral head. Acetabulum is here. Okay, so what's... You see it? Ella? What's this? Is that a fractured ilium? Nope. Those are actually growth centers. That's how the ilium grows. So this is someone probably 14, 15. This is called riser's sign. Riser's sign. And it has different grades. You'll get that when you get to the real x-ray. But we won't go into that. But I want you to be familiar with riser's sign. So this, that means this patient is still growing. What's this little bump right here? See at this little point? That's the spine of the ischium. Is that right? Or is this the spine of the ischium? This is the spine down here. This is the greater sciatic notch right here. Okay, next. There's another riser sign. This one's a little more pronounced. Let's see what else we can see on this one. Can you see anything we hear? Of course you can. So what's happened here? All right. So this patient had a fractured. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the conda. It looks more like it was the head. Femoral head was fractured. Looks a little funky here. So they put a screw through it to try to stabilize the fracture while the body heals. Nice obturator frame in here. What else do we need to say? That's about it. Let's go to the next one. Okay, moving on down. We should immediately know what this is. What's number one? Kind of a shield-like. Good, that's the patella. Okay, so this is an AP knee. Number two is this little point right here. So what's the whole area called? Intercondylar region. The whole thing, both of these points, is the intercondylar eminence. So this is either going to be the medial-lateral intercondylar tubercle. Which one is it? Here's lateral. So it's the medial intercondylar tubercle. Let's go up to number three. That's lateral epicondyle or medial epicondyle? Medial epicondyle. It's also close. If I put it up a little higher, even if you said this here, I wouldn't mark you wrong. What's that big bump right here for Dr. Magnus? Dr. Tubercle. How about four? It's a lateral condyle, the surface. So we call that the articular surface of the lateral condyle. This is all lateral condyle here. And this is the articular surface. What's this whole ball of wax called? The medial lateral articular surfaces uh, of the condyles as well as this intercondylar area. The whole thing is called the tibial plateau. In an x-ray, anatomy we don't talk about that too much, but in uh, radiography we talk about fractures of the tibial plateau. Number five, aha, that's the fibula, but more specific. It's the apex of the fibula. So this would be the head of the fibula, neck of the fibula. Okay, and where are we? Six, what about this region? So this is the condyle. It doesn't show up in this one very good, but this is the 
would be the medial condyle of the femur. This would be the medial condyle of the tibia. If it was up on the surface, it would be the articular surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. Got it? And let's see, circled the patella for you. I think we did I add anything we need to go over? Nope. We got all those points there. Okay, let's moving right along here. Here's another one. I threw this in here because now you can see the outline of the condyle. So what's this the region? So you can see the cortical bone right there. Let's kind of remember that and the kind of the chicken bone. Here's the other chicken bone here. So this is the lateral and this is the medial condyle of the femur. And now you can see real nicely what's this region again? Intercondylar eminence. And this specifically this one is the if I put a sticker right there. Medial intercondylar tubercle, lateral intercondylar tubercle. You can see now, that's a, that's a nice one. I could put a sticker right there. That's the adductor tubercle. That's where adductor magnus inserts, amongst other places. What are these things? I hear your question. What are these? So these are epithelial lines. This is where there were growth plates, where you grow longitudinally here. They're closed, so this uh, person has stopped growing. You can see the patella too? What was the parts of the patella? What's down here? I can put a sticker there. Apex. Up here is the base. It's like a shield. Okay, here's a lateral knee. Okay, looking, what does that mean? We're looking at it from the side. I think I got some numbers here. Okay, so number one, that's the patella. Number two, can you see the fibula, the head of the fibula hiding here? Head of the fibula, number three, this bump. Good. Tibial tuberosity. Number four. So this is just trying to be the whole ball of wax here. Remember, these are two dimensional, so we're, this is not a slice, so whole ball of wax. This is the tibial plateau. Now, I want to know what this shadow is right here. Good, that's the patellar ligament or patellar tendon, some people call it. Going from the tibia tuberosity to the to this part to number five. It's the apex of the patella. Excellent. Okay, everything labeled there for you. Alright, now what's going on here? Let me let you look at this for a minute or you can pause it. Okay, first of all, what's all this wispy stuff? Ah, this patient's in a brace or in a, maybe a cast. It looks like maybe a cast. So something's wrong. Let's look for fractures. See any? How's the patella look? Shattered. So this guy's got a fractured patella. He has a special name, but we don't need to know that right now. Just be able to see that it's fractured. Okay, moving down to the ankle now. So it's kind of a weird lateral view, but this is the lateral ankle. Let's get to the numbers. Number one, well, what's this whole bone right here? Good, that's the calcaneus. So this is the tuberosity of the calcaneus. And it's, remember, it's got the lateral medial uh, process are called tuber, tu, uh, tubercles as well. Um, but they're superimposed, so you could call this just the tuberosity of the calcaneus. So number two, before we look at two and three, let's look at this whole ball of wax here. So this whole thing is the what? What sits on top of the talus? Or what sits, okay, it's getting late. This is the talus. So specifically number two, you would have to say the head of the talus because you can get fractures there and especially right here this would be the neck of the talus 
number four. Okay, that's the talocrural joint or the mortise joint. It's four, uh, number five. So what sits in front of the talus? Navicular. So five is the navicular. These are the caneiforms kind of superimposed. You had to take a guess. I'd say it's the medial caneiform, but just caneiforms is fine because they're superimposed upon each other. Number six. That's the cuboid. And number seven is the tuberosity of the base of the fifth metatarsal or the styloid process. Okay, there's some labels. Do we go over these things? What about eight? What's this thing superimposed here? Yeah, that's the fibula. And there's number nine, you can see it here and here, that's the tibia. Okay. System taculum tali. Didn't really do that. You can't see it. But what is this hole? I could stick something here. What's this hole? Sinus tarsi. I could could have put one right there, so I would write that down. Sinus tarsi is right here. How about this joint right here? Well, this is the talus. That's the subtalar joint. Remember in the cadaver lab, we saw it back here posterior part of it, but this is all the subtalar joint. Okay. Let's see. I'll make sure I'm not... Oh, there's... I mean, this is kind of beyond your scope, but... See anything weird? Let me just point it out. See this... The reason this patient's foot was bent down, he had a lot of trouble walking. And if you look real closely, see there's a fragment of bone here. So that's called osteochondritis desiccans, where a piece of the articular cartilage just tears up and becomes a joint mouse. It gets stuck in the joint. And it's not an inflammatory condition like the name sounds. The original researchers thought osteochondritis. I thought it must be an inflammation, but there's actually no inflammation associated with that. Let's check this out. This is an A to P view, a little weird angle again. but So that's the what? fibula so that's the lateral malleolus for number two medial malleolus of the tibia remember in class and you gotta say lateral malleolus of the fibula medial malleolus of the tibia and here we have the that's the tailor dome or the trochlea of the talus either one of those is fine x-ray and radiography we tend to say the tailor dome but either one's fine And, okay, last one. See it? Of course you see this. You guys saw the transverse process fracture. I think you can spot this. So we have, what's that supposed to be? So that was the medial malleolus fractured. So this is an avulsion fracture. Somebody sprained their ankle so bad uh, that the ligament ripped the tip of the medial malleolus right off the bone and they have a fracture through the lateral malleolus here so this this was a be an eversion sprain usually you have inversion sprains where you get an avulsion of the lateral malleolus but this was at the other direction so it's jammed the head of the um, it jabbed the head of the fibula here up and it actually fractured so the ankle twisted that way and it pulled so hard here it snapped the medial malleolus out fractured the lateral malleolus I think are we done we are done alright good luck now remember these will only be for extra credit uh, all four extra credit will come pretty much from these slides I might throw something in there but uh, um, It'll be fun. Okay, good luck. See you in class.